I'm here with Jake LaBelle following Dover's 0 yeah. 0 draw with Boreham Wood today. Jake, a, a disappointing in result, and I think looking at the last three games, fans will probably point to the lack of goals. Why do you think the team is struggling to put the ball in the net at the minute? I wouldn't say we're struggling to put the ball in the net at all. I think if you look back, we've scored four, four there, three there. It's just the last three games we're struggling to put the ball in the back of the net. East, I mean, Tuesday night, I think we want to forget about um, Tuesday night. Eastbourne here was a little bit similar today, and although to be fair to um, Bournemouth, that they had some decent chances as well. I mean, we could be sitting here talking about 4-4, and these sort of questions wouldn't be asked quite comfortably. So you know, it's, it's easy to say that's the obvious that we haven't scored goals again today for the third time at home. But I don't think there's a major issue. I mean, look at our goals for this season; it's right up there. It's just you know, it's just the way it is. It's just the easy question to ask, to be honest. And the fans vented their frustrations today. Yeah, of course, the fans, the fans are frustrated. Like we're all frustrated, but you know, like I said to the lads, it, it's we're frustrated because of what's gone on previously. You know, the slow start to we had to the season, the, the amount of games we've lost here. So, as the games get, you know, as the games dry up, we we, we need points to secure playoff. Obviously, you know, we're going to get frustrated, but. On a normal, you know, a normal scenario where we've we've done a lot better at home, you, you know, you, you you take a draw today and you and you move on. You know, it's you know, we're not here. We're here to build and progress and and all that. And it's part of it. I mean, for some unknown reason, people just expect us to turn up, win every game, score four goals, and you know, these these are just beating Ebbs Fleet. They're just beating Concord. who are right up there. You know, it's just it's just not it's just not the way it happens in football. And uh, from a player point of view. Um, do you need to manage them differently? If, if, if the fans are on their back, do you have to treat them slightly differently? No, I mean, the players, you know, I mean, most of the players have seen it all before. The players know, you know, there's, there's no there's no big issue. There's no issue. The players might get a little bit nervy. All, all, all what happens really is the, is, is the fans sort of uh, don't help the players. That's what, But I do understand the play, you know, the fans' reaction because we're all feeling it. You're probably feeling it. I'm feeling it. But... Like I say, it's it's from what's happened previously, uh, the beginning of the season, where you know we haven't been, you know, there's been some games here that have been pretty dire and, and dull, and we haven't got out teams. But Eastbourne here, we you know we created chances today. You can't say we didn't create chances. All right, not not brilliant chances, but their keepers pulled off three or four worldly saves, similar to Mitch. Like I said, you know, we could be sitting here talking about four four quite comfortably. Would it, would the amount of games that are being played, you know, Thursday night, Tuesday night, would more time on the training uh, ground help from your point of view? Yeah, of course it would. I mean, of course it would. All, we'd all like more time to go through to go through stuff, but that's why, again, you know, it, it takes time. I mean, you know, the, the Eastleys and, and, and the Suttons probably do that and spend a lot more time. But, you know, we're not in that position. We're not full time. We get the lads literally, you know, it can be an hour a week when you're playing twice a week. And it's, you know, we try to do as much as we can pre-season. And then, then it takes lads a while to adjust to it. And that's just how it is. On a positive note, not conceding any goals. Is it easier to build on a solid defence than it is uh, with, with a team that's perhaps conceding lots of goals? You, you can't, if you want to win things, you've got to not concede goals. So, you know, I think we're probably the best or second best goals against, which, which is a positive. You know, people, people might say that, you know, perhaps we don't get enough people, people forward. Well, yeah, m maybe there's a little point, but, you know, what we've got and the players we've got, for whatever reasons, it, it's just how we feel at the moment to, to set it up. And like I said, Eastbourne, we created enough chances to win the game. Tuesday, let's all forget. Um, really, really disappointed and frustrated with Tuesday. Um, but today, again, you know they got some players. They got they got the the free forwards are all league players. You know, they're no mugs. These players they'll probably go on to have league careers, and they're, you know, they're here for Boreham Wood, uh, playing for them to get games. You know, and it's not it's not easy. You don't just turn up and uh, and walk over, to, run over teams, and especially um, you know especially not the first season in the job as such. So uh, you know we're we're a few short. We know what positions uh, we need to strengthen. Uh, getting hold of them is very difficult, but we just got to be patient, and, and eventually, you know, the ones that come along for the, in the right time for the right money, etc., etc. You still confident at the players? I mean, I just looked at the results now. I mean, if we can string results together, then I, then I'm confident of getting in the playoffs. I mean, obviously, I mean, I was very impressed with um, having when we went down there. Although we beat them, I thought they were a good side. But again, he's been down there for two seasons, built his side, got got a good squad. And uh, I thought they were a good, strong, strong team, haven't? Um, but you know, we just got to keep plugging away. I mean, I said in my programme, Nate, that see, we get a bit of positivity around the place. But 
I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a Dover boy, I'm a Dover fan, and I, I can, I, again, you know, because of the home record over the two or three years, I can understand, especially the fans who don't go away and don't see the, you know, don't see the goals flying in, and, and we're always frustrated at each other. But, you know, if, if we're going to progress, everyone's got to stick together. I mean, clubs where I've been and we've been successful, there's been, there hasn't been this type of atmosphere where it's doom and gloom after, after a nil nil. Um, but like I say, I do understand. But we have got to stick together. The players, the players are fine. The players are up disappointed they didn't get a win, like like we all. But um, you know, you could say, why didn't you throw three up top and all that? But you know, it's, it's not, it's not the way it happens. You throw three up top, four up top, and you'll get done. You'll get done on the break, and, and you're in, and you end up losing. Um, so yeah, that's where we are at the moment. Good. Cheers, Jake. No Thank worries. you. I'm here with two or four following Dover's nil nil draw with Borehamwood today. Uh, man of the match today. Uh, I take it you'd rather got the three points today. Yeah, we um, we done really well today. We kept a clean sheet. That's the main thing. Um, but yeah, we had a few chances and we should have um, tucked them away. But I say it goes. Uh, we're still in the playoffs and we're doing alright. Fans made their feelings known uh, at the final whistle. Uh, obviously, as a player, you've probably been there. You've done it. What's your advice to the players at moments like that? Oh, well, I mean. The fans, obviously, they're going to have their opinions and stuff, but at the end of the day, we're still doing our thing and um, we got to move on to the next game on Tuesday and um, be focused and continue to do the right stuff. And looking at the, um, looking at the stats um, today, Dover are the best, have got the best away uh, form in the division, so if all games were played away, they'd be top of the table. What, what do you make of that? It's a tough one. As we, the boys were talking about that, we got good good away form. I think it's based on no fear playing at, away. We feel a bit under pressure at home, so all the fans have just got to stick with us and um, and we'll just keep going on from there, keep playing on, doing the right stuff. And are you confident that that can be turned around and that final playoff spot can be secured? Yeah, I think we just need to be a bit more ruthless in front of goal, like we have in the, f um, the last couple of weeks, but we've got to keep progressing and keep kicking on and we'll be there and about to the end of the season. I'm here with uh, Chris Kinnear following Dover's 0-0 draw with Borenwood today. Chris, a disappointing result. What did you think of the game? No, disappointing. We started really well, I thought, in the first half. Um, we did well. Second half, we had lots of chances, but yeah, it's not easy on these pitches. I mean, I go to lots of games and, you know, there's not many games that are much better than that. It's easy sitting at home and watching uh, Premiership football and just the highlights of Manchester, or Manchester City and Chelsea and that. But, you know, unfortunately with the pitches the way they are. But uh, we're disappointed. The players are disappointed. Jake and I are disappointed. We want to be winning at home. But, uh, you know, at the moment it's not, not going. It's 270 minutes without a goal um, at home. How can a team do better at scoring goals, do you think? Put it in the net. I mean, you know, it's... Uh, I mean, look at the chances we had, really. Their keepers pulled off three probably world-class saves. As you saw it on the telly, they'll be raving about it. So, again, a bit of luck and just a bit of support from everybody uh, and hopefully it'll, it'll go their way. You decided to take Moses Adamola off um, yeah. in, in the second half. The, the fans gave their views on that. Um, what, what was your thinking behind it? Well, I thought he was getting a little bit tired and I thought Ricky, early on in the season, uh, showed a lot of patience. He was our top scorer for a long while. Uh, it was a way of just getting Ricky on, really, to, to try. He had a chance, didn't he, when he came on in a six-yard box and he just couldn't get to it. Uh, was using his pace but uh, you know we had to do something the game was petering out to a nil-nil um, and we didn't want it to be so that's why we changed put a couple of forwards on because we didn't want it to peter out but you know the other side when you, when you play at home the other side have uh, uh, other thoughts than that and of course it was ironic that after you made the substitution actually that's when your best chances came yeah well there you go so it just shows you it made chances so maybe we were right in some respect when fans vent their frustrations, like they did um, at the substitution yep. at, at, and at the full-time whistle, what goes through your mind? I hope it's not getting to the players, really. I mean, as I say, I've been, been doing it long enough. I mean, it never has uh, bothered me, but, uh, you know, as long as the players don't get down, I mean, it will do some of the younger, younger players. Uh, but, again, as we said, you know, as part of the learning process for them, you know, pressure really is what you put on yourself and uh, the players have just got to play as well as they can. Um, individually um, and not worry about what's going on uh, away from home they do uh, they work hard when people come here as you saw today they, they had the lads at the back there they made sure that they didn't uh, weren't too adventurous to be fair they, Mitch didn't really have a save to make alright they had a chance right at the end because we were pushing forward again um, but 
you know, what do you do? Uh, you just hopefully we start ratting a few goals in, which we've been away from home because the sides come to you, or the sides when you play at, uh, away, uh, away uh, spread out, and you, you can get at them, we can break at them, but you can't break at them at, at home. But it's not just been now; it's the last three years. As I say we were, it's the only. It's the problem with being at Dover, isn't it? Really, uh, everyone comes here and they don't want to get beaten by Dover. It's been that the last few years, so. Uh, but that, that don't mean that we can't try. You, you made a point there about this. It, it, the, the form at Crabble has not been great for, for a number of seasons now. Is there a obviously with the results perhaps not being as that as you would want at home at the minute? Is there a longer term project needed to, to improve? The yeah, we have form? to be finishing. I mean, we know what we need to do to change it. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. Um, at the moment, you can't. The deadline's here, and obviously in the summer is when you sign the players that can. But uh, as I say, we knew it would be a, a bit longer, really, because all the players that left in the summer. Um, you look at any side that, uh, I mean, you can go to look Man United, really. If they, you know, you change your side or something happens, uh, you just can't change it. And, uh, you know, but I'm saying that, we've got the best away record in the league. We scored lots of goals. If you look at our goal difference, we're in the best four or five in the league. So, you know, there's something right there. Obviously, there's a little bit here, which, uh, again, add in a few players. But, again, what we don't, what I don't want to do is keep the young, let the younger players go. I mean, over the years, they've had good young players here and they've just moved them on because supporters have got on their backs. Um, and... And just bought new ones in, but it, you need a, you need that team spirit and lads that have been here a little while, like the the Tom Tom Winter who's started to, he's been here a little while. And uh, if the club's to progress, that's the only way. Or you're just going to keep changing changing players, and uh, that's not the right way to do it. A good experience for the players, and hopefully, uh, hopefully that's uh, that's what he'll do. You touched on the away form, and uh, I saw this morning that Dover actually have the best away form in the league. So if it was if it was just based on away games, your team would be top of the table. Do you take great heart from that, or do you that, that your team can beat anyone, um, or is it more frustrating that you, you can't win the games that maybe you should be at home? Both. Uh, I take great heart that there's something right somewhere. Uh, the best goal difference, the best away form. We scored probably more goals than most in the league, uh, and let probably um, again in the top two or three goals against. So something's right. It's just here. It, it, there's a little bit of stress, and as I try to say, maybe the lads have got to learn that uh, you know. They've just got to do their bit. They just can't worry worry about what's going on around them. But uh, you know, there's something that they'll learn. Um, but again, you know, that doesn't mean that we're not very, very disappointed. We are disappointed. We, we'd rather turn it up the other way. But I'm saying that I'd rather win away and win at home as well. So you know, but that's something that we'll do if we can uh, keep the side, well, a majority of the side together. Would the message to the fans be that there are the makings of a very good team? Um, you don't, disposal. Well, we'll have a look at the stats, really. If people just look at stats, really, you know, one of the best top scorers in the league, one of the least against. The only weakness at the moment is is the results at home. Um, you know, hey, I'm a fan. I've been here. How many years have I been here? And I care desperately about the club. Um, and to be fair, the players do, really. It's just that you can see they get a little bit and start doing things that they don't normally do away from home. And, you know, sides come and they sit back and uh, we've just got to get on with it, really. And I suppose that only takes time, doesn't it? Well, yes, unless you spend loads and loads of money or pay them during the summer or something like a lot of sides do. But, uh, you know, there isn't loads and loads of money. The club look after the players. Um, and we've got to get a spirit here where you just you just keep changing players, changing players. Um, and we've just got to, got to build, really. And on, on the building process, um, some players, I'm sure, haven't had their contracts sorted. When are, your, when are you planning to sort out players' future? Well, when we know, obviously, what league, league we're in, uh, it'll make a difference. And we we'll just be chatting to players every uh, occasionally when we get a chance to. I mean, games are coming thick and fast. There's not much chance, really. Um, but, as I say, I mean, a lot of the lads, the younger lads, have signed longer-term contracts anyway. Um, but... You know, we've got to look into that and obviously see and target players that can improve the side and squad. Um, in your last seven games, you've actually got five away. Um, is that could that be a blessing in disguise? No, I'd rather play here. I like coming to Dover. You know, I want to play and we want to see. You know, we want to do well here. No, I mean, again, I don't know about the players really. I mean, hopefully they don't. They, they don't not want to come here, but I, I want to come here. You know, this is our home ground. It's a great place to be. Um, but. No, as I say, where, whoever we play home or away, as it shows, that uh, we can be, we, we can beat them, and, and that's what we'll be trying to do. 
still confident of, of securing that playoff spot? Well, it won't be for the one to try, and I can assure you, because, uh, you know, that's the aim. But, uh, you know, they've not had a bad season, the supporters, really, let's be fair. I mean, the year before, they were out of all the Cups in October, and, you know, we got to the second round of the FA Cup at MK Dons and still in the trophy for a long while. I think we were the... Well, no one else in Kent lasted in the trophy longer than us. You know, still the Kent Senior Cup, which, you know, maybe we'll have a little bit of a change round, obviously, because, as you say, there's a lot of games coming on. Uh, so it's been a good season in that respect, if you sit down and logically, but football's not about logic, is it? It's just here and now, isn't it? And that's why people are disappointed. But uh, I've got to think for the long term, or it'll just be the club will stay and not move, not move on. And uh, your your next game, as you said, is, is here on Tuesday night, Bromley in the uh, Kent Cup. Like you said, you're planning to make changes, so I take it you'll be resting some of the players that feature yeah, today. Right. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, the rest of them need to play as well to get our fitness up because you don't know when you, whenever you need them. Um, and you know, we've just got to get on with it, really. As I say, I'm, I'm sure Bromley will possibly. I mean, you know, they want to do well in the cup as well, don't they? Uh, in the uh, in the league, and they've had a was it five they lost in the trot. So uh, you know, it happens to sides, but so we just got to get our head up and move on.